The Air Force is now the lead agency for military space programs, including missile defense. One important aspect of the increased responsibility can be found in California. Staff Sergeant Marty Rush examines a vital cog in the Air Force space program wheel. Los Angeles Air Force Base, California. No aircraft, no runway. Not a hint of what most people think an Air Force Base is supposed to be. Little do people know this Air Force Base is home to an organization whose work affects virtually every airman in the Air Force. It's the Space and Missile Systems Center. Lieutenant General Brian Arnold says the name of the game here is acquisitions. What we're trying to do is improve what you currently have. And the, the bottom line is we procure military equipment because of the efficiencies gained in the prosecution of war for no other reason. The center is responsible for almost 30 different programs, from space-based radar to military satellites to one of the Air Force's most successful technologies, Global Positioning Systems, or GPS. GPS is a position, navigation, and timing uh, system, and we provide the navigation accuracy so our troops, airmen, and sailors know exactly where they are, wherever they're deployed, anywhere on the globe. GPS has been in use for several years, but with the help of those at the Space and Missile Systems Center, the technology is improving. In Afghanistan, you may have seen the picture of the airman on horseback uh, riding with a precision lightweight GPS receiver, uh, which was probably hidden in the picture. But this was the heart and soul of how he knew where he was. Then using his laser range finders, he was able to pinpoint the enemy location and use that to call in the airstrikes to take out the enemies, all in a matter of minutes. But technological advances don't happen overnight. It takes time. By the time you, you take off on a real program, you get it funded, and you go through a whole series of uh, designs from uh, a preliminary design to a critical design was where you lock in the final design solution to actually fielding it is quite a bit of time. So we look way out there, we plan ahead, and of course you have to budget for these things also. Another program here is something called the Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicles Program, or EELV. It's part of a plan to replace Atlas, Delta, and Titan rockets. Essentially what we did is we took uh, missiles out of the hole, uh, basically made some small design changes, effectively pushing the margin on all of those vehicles and turned them into launch vehicles to launch satellites. The program is not only cheaper, it's more efficient and can carry larger payloads than former ICBMs. But those aren't the only changes. The Air Force has always owned and operated the manning and equipment for its rocket launches, but not anymore. We're actually purchasing commercial launch services from the contractor. The contractor is responsible for putting the systems together, operating them off the Cape and launching them. And as a result, the Air Force doesn't pay for a standing army. We pay a set price for a launch service to launch a satellite. Global Positioning Systems and Launch Vehicles are only two of the center's 28 programs involving almost 1,500 airmen and more than 1,000 civilians who work here. Succinctly put, SMC or Space and Missile Systems Center is the center of excellence for the acquisition of space and missile systems for the warfighter. And we do that by providing at the best cost, at the best schedule, and the best performance we can get to provide that capability for a warfighter. Three. Two, one, zero, ignition and liftoff. With the Air Force given the lead on military space defense, the work done at this California Air Force Base takes on added meaning and importance. Staff Sergeant Marty Rush, Air Force News, Los Angeles Air Force Base, California.